One of our subscribers asked, would you please do a quick tip on value scales? Why are there so many? If I use a 7 value scale, the value it has numbered as 3 is different from the number on the 10 value scale or even a 5 value scale. This is confusing. And then he goes on to say, the, to make it worse, some teachers call the darkest value number 10, while others call it value 1. And he says, what's going on with all this? Well, that's a can of worms we need to open. All right, let's start from the beginning before there was ever a value scale. You see this continuous value gradation here that goes from the darkest dark to the lightest light. How many values do you see? Well, if we attempted to count all these values, we would end up with perhaps a hundred or more. So, and then if we look in this scene and try to count all the actual values we see, we might end up with dozens at least. So that's the reason the value scale came into, uh, became, became a creation, and I don't even know when the value scale started. I've tried to do some historical research and can't find any, uh, any agreement on that. But let's just say when the first person got the idea of that value scale, it was scale. It was simply a way to separate values into fields, value areas into fields so that they had some way of talking about it to students or illustrating it to students. Now let's move on here and I want to show you something. I'll take this away and here we go. Every value scale has a one thing in common that is the darkest dark is always on one end. One end and the lightest light is always on the other end. From that point, it gets subdivided. Now, in most value scales, you'll find that the middle value will be, this value right here, will be right in between the darkest dark and the lightest light. Now, I won't say that's consistent among all of them, but I'll say it is consistent among, among most of them. Now, here we just have a three value scale. And that would just be a way of thinking about value areas in, gen in general. It doesn't mean that there would only be one dark, one middle, and one light. It means that there, there would be a dark field of value. It might vary a little bit. A middle field of value and a light field of value. But then that got subdivided. And but, uh, here is the five value scale. Now, I don't know which came first, the 5 or the 7. Uh, so you see what happens in the 5 value scale. We get, a, um, we get a value that's in between the middle and the darkest. And we get another one in between the middle and the lightest. Now, we can look over here. And we see that makes a little bit more sense. We could actually divide this scene into 5 value areas pretty close to five values and still be able to do a painting that would, uh, in which we would be able to correctly interpret the light and the shadow areas of the scene. But then we go back to the seven value field, which was the next breakdown. And what we have there, we have the dark, we have the middle, and we have two values in between them. It gets broken down a little bit more. And then we have the middle and the lightest, and then the two values between them. You see that gets broken down. Now this was the one I learned by back in the early, late 50s, early 60s, when I first studied, started studying painting. Uh, and so this is the way I think, uh, pretty much like this, except a little bit more expanded. But the value numbers originally called the darkest value by the highest number. So this number seven, we thought of number seven in those days as black. And we thought of number one as white. But then along came um, the along came the theorists, people that were writing books on color and value and that sort of thing. And we ended up with a 10 value scale. And then the numbers got switched because they were thinking of 100% light as um, as being, well, 100%, I can't remember how it went now. But anyway, 
the, ten, the darkest dark at that point became one. And for all of us who had grown up with the value scale where the darkest dark uh, was the high, highest number, it was total confusion. But as teachers began to teach that principle where the darkest dark is actually, um, the darkest dark is actually the highest number, um, or the darkest dark with the lowest number, whichever one you learned by was the one you thought by. It still got to be confusing. Um, now, value scales began to come out in various, degree, various kinds of arrangements, and this is a popular one here that has um, the light values, light to middle on one side, and then, or light, actually light to middle light on one side, and then light to middle dark on the other side. And this one, when it first came out, had a number one as the lightest light. And then later, when I noticed that the same value scale was putting number one as ten. Well, you see what I did, I just go right in, and I, I uh, this is called value ten right here, I just go right in and I renumber it for my students if, if we're learning by this value scale. So, but if I'm talking to you about a value, and I'm over here, and we're trying to decide what value areas you're looking at, if I refer to values 3, say, and if you're used to thinking in terms of 10, then you're going to think I'm talking about value 8. So that gets to be a real problem. And it's for that reason, uh, well, now maybe I've explained to the person that asked this question why so many came into being. You see, it really is a legitimate problem. If, if I'm trying to explain value to you and you're used to one arrangement, then you might think I'm speaking of a darker value when I'm actually speaking of a lighter value. All right, here's my solution to that problem. Uh, I don't remember the person asked for a solution, just asked for an explanation. There's your explanation. That's why it's so confusing out there. Here's my solution to the problem, and it's free for you if you want it. Uh, this is called the Dynamize No Tan Value Scale. Now, those of you who've studied with me for some time know that I use the No Tan Principles for uh, designing the shadow areas in shadow in a painting and the areas that are not in shadow. And that's why I call this the No Tan Value Scale. Um, and you see how what I have here is not numbers, but descriptions. So in this scale, let me just take this down here so I can show you a little bit more clearly. I will just put this right here. Right here, just like that. Now, there we go. Okay, now you can see what, what I'm doing here is using words rather than numbers to help you to understand value. I'm also relating all values to light and shadow as to whether um, what we're seeing is in a shadow area or in a light area. So I'm calling the darkest dark the accent. That would be the occlusion shadow where we don't see any light. That's the black, so I don't call it 10. Uh, well, if I do call it 10, I am referring to that. But most of the time I'm going to refer to that, uh, that darkest dark as, as a description, not as a number. Then you've heard me talk of the deep shadows, the mid shadows, and the shallow shadows. That's not shallow value, but shallow, shallow shadows, where in a shadow area, the ones that are, have least light in, in the foliage, they, these areas right in here, these areas right in, of course, the photograph is going to make it darker than we actually see it. But these are going to be the deep shadow areas. If I say deep shadow, I'm hoping that you can think in terms of this value area. In this shadow area right here, we see that the value gets lighter as it gets closer to the areas that are hit by light. This is what I'm calling the middle. That's the value area that's in between the deepest and the most shallow. And that's what I'm calling right here, this value area. It's not just a single value, but a value area. It may lean one way or another. And that's what the area we would see about right in here. And then I'm calling the shallow shadow. That's areas that are barely in shadow. They're receiving ambient light. Um, and, and most likely in those areas, the next thing we're going to see is light. So the, uh, or we may say shallow shadows in really reflective areas. 
But this shallow shallow is this value. This is the value area. And this is the area right in here. You can see this is still in shadow, but it's not as deep as this. Then I talk about, then I use this, this middle value as transition. There is, there are those areas between what's in shadow and what's not in shadow um, that are transition where the shadow is moving out of, uh, where the shadow is moving out of shadow and into light. And that very, that value may vary just a little bit, but that value also is going to remain the same whether it is in a low light or a shallow shadow. It's that, that's the reason we call it transition. All right. Uh, then we move on. Instead of calling this value of 4 or was it, well, the other side would be value 6 on that principle, I'm calling it low light. That's the area uh, that's receiving just a little bit of the light as, it, as the sun is hitting or the light is hitting. So if the light source is, say, up here, shining directly here, then the part that's hitting the strongest is going to be that lightest light right there. Then as as the subject might be bending away from the light, well, let's say bending away from the light a little bit right here, right back here where it's receiving the least of that direct light is low light. So that's the reason I refer that I refer as that to low light. And we can see in this area right in here, we can see some low light right here where the, the light is being slightly shut out. And then we have the area between, uh, we have the next area, then we would call the middle light. And you see it just goes low to middle to high, and then the accent of light where it's hitting the strongest. So we can see that, we can see an example of that with light right in here. The light is low, and then we can see it getting, we see a more middle here, and we can see a, a more direct light right here where it gets lighter. Um, we see smaller amounts of the high, what we call the highlight, which is that part that is the center light where the light, the light source is hitting directly. We see smaller amounts of this and of the accent where the light is being totally squeezed out. We see smaller amounts of that usually in nature, um, unless of course if we're working in almost in the dark. But um, this is just a way to talk about the values without having to use numbers. So that if I say to you, um, this is a low light, then you can think in terms of this value area right here. And you don't have to be confused about whether this is value 4 or value 6. Now, as I said before, if you go to the website, dianemice.com, up in the menu section, click on free stuff. And it will take you to the area where we have bunches of free stuff for you. But look for the Notan Value Scale. If you would like a copy of this, if you think you might find it helpful, look for the Notan Value Scale, and you can you'll get a copy of that in a PDF. You can print it, and you can use it. Now, one one thing I find very valuable. Let me say one more thing before I close this out. One thing I find very valuable about this and all value scales is to be able to look through this at the subject and identify the value area. So you can take a hole puncher, once you print this out, print it out on something that's a little bit stiff. Uh, you can take a hole punch and punch holes in these little center areas. And then you can use that to look through. Close one eye and just hold it out like this kind of arm's length. And look through and you can align it. And you can, by aligning it with what you're looking at, you can locate the value area. Now I'll illustrate that for you here. Let's say this area of the, of the river right there where you see it's not the lightest value. If I keep, keep moving forward, you see it's getting closer to this low light. And we see right here, that is in that transition value range. Let's see, it's a little bit, so it, 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 it's in that transition to shallow value range. Wait a minute. Okay, there we go, right there. So you can see, all right, there are areas of that that fall darker. This can also help you to to locate those various transitions that we see in value. This is not all one value. So you can see if by doing this, oh, it's not that dark. This little area right here is not that dark. It's just about that value. So that's about a mid-value in shadow area. And then we can see as we move on down that river, that it becomes a little bit lighter. You can see right here, okay, it's not that light. So we'd want to use that much white or light. Not that light. Not that light, not that light. Okay, that's closer. Oh, it's more like a shallow, between a shallow shadow and a 
transition value. So if you think about value uh, as being related to shadow and light, if you think about value as being um, being more fluid, it's not just one area, but when you speak of a value, you're speaking of a value area, then that could, should help you to understand something about why we, how we can use these value scales to help us find whatever value we're looking at in our subject. Be sure and view all of our quick tips. While you're doing so, subscribe to the channel, click on the bell, so you'll always get a notice when we produce a new quick tip, which is every week. And if you have a question, leave it in the comments section, and we'll make a quick tip for you. Also, take a trip over to DianeMize.com, where I have full-length lessons, downloads, DVDs, lots of other stuff there, some free stuff for you. And while you're there, you can subscribe to the newsletter, and that way you'll always be informed every time we do something new.